believe with all my heart with how God's laid this message on my heart, somebody is over there in Moab. Somebody sitting here tonight could be in Moab. Watch this now. Elimelech died. Verse number 9, his sons died. Hey, this probably wasn't one of the places he wanted his sons to die. Do you want your sons and daughters to die out in sin? Do you want your sons and daughters to be out there? I like what Pastor Whitmer did. God up and prayed for these youngins. God called them to the mission field. God called them to the past. Hey, there's going to be some good. If the Lord tarries, there'll be some good preachers and Sunday school teachers and choir leaders and good godly mamas. Amen. That's what we need in our society today. Hey, man, that's what we need in our families today. Mama just don't want to be a mama no more. I know y'all say mother down south. We say mama. Amen. There's three kind of M's down the south. And an M's, sin M's, and mama M's. You get that after a while. But anyway, what I'm saying tonight, listen, the perils of there. Now Naomi is left behind. How many of you tonight, you might be sitting here, you might be the one that's been left behind. You might be the one that's been left behind because you didn't go where God wanted you to go. I took a little bit different twist on this. I know it's about missions, but this will apply to it. Maybe God's dealing with somebody's heart to do something. To do something more, there's always more to be done, amen. Always the prolonging of there. Look at verse number 4. And the Bible says, and, he took them, and they took them wives of the women of Moab, and the name of the one was Orpha, and the name of the other Ruth, and they dwelt there ten years. Wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hang on. I started out, they just went for the night, and now it's been ten years. How many of you, Lord of mercy, men, <laughs> have started a project at the house? <laughs> I see some elbows, amen. Started, my wife's going, yeah, you. Started a project at the house, or <laughs> amen, brother, you're the first honest one, Amen. Started a project at the house, remodeling the bathroom, kitchen, or something. Started building something, some you. And man, you're gonna get that thing. You're all fired up. I'm gonna do it. Gonna do it. Gonna do it. Three months goes down the road. I'm gonna do it. Six months is gone. I'm gonna do it. Two years is gone down the road. <laughs> well, I'll get to it when I can. <laughs> I'm a busy man. Sometimes we do things like that in our life, don't we? Put it off. We are creatures of procrastination. Put it off. Hey, I'm the world's worst one. I'm, I got three, uh, three fingers coming back at me when I point one. Procrastination is what? We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. Sometimes we don't need to wait. Sometimes we need to, need to step out and do what God said. Amen. Listen to me tonight. Now their sons have married Moabitish women. Now their stop off. Or their plans of a short stay is turned into 10 years. How many years are you going to waste? If there's a sinner here tonight, how many years are you going to let sin pull from you tonight? I'll get saved next week. You know the biggest lie of the devil is? He never says don't do it. He just says wait. Wait till next Sunday, Pastor Valiente. Wait till next week. I'll do it next week. God, if you're calling me, I, I'll do it. But wait, I got this right here to do, and I'll, I'll do it later. No, right now. Right now. Prolonging. How, how long are you going? How, long are you, how much time have you wasted? Are you there? Are you there tonight? Last of all tonight, listen to me. I don't want to leave you there. I, I don't, I don't want to leave you down there. I've been looking at all these clocks trying to figure out which one I'm supposed to preach by. <laughs> <laughs> I just now figured it out. It's that one, amen. <laughs> Woo, amen. <laughs> Praise God, amen. I'll tell you what, y'all shouldn't feed me so much like that. Next time, let me go first if I get to come back, amen. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. Listen to what I'm saying. Hey, the passage out of the... I don't want to leave you there tonight. Hey, tonight in this missions conference, let's don't stay there where we don't pray anymore. Let's don't stay there when we're not giving anymore. Let's don't stay in a place where we're not going anymore. There is a passage out of there. What do you mean, preacher? Look at verse number 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law. Thank God for a mom-in-law like that. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. I know it kills us, but we got to say amen right there. Hey, listen, then rose with her daughters-in-law. Then that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people, giving them bread. Do you realize tonight 
that through missions, people hear how the gospel is through the Espinel, Espinels down in Uruguay. He was telling us about how his country is and how they're not real receptive to the gospel and everything, how it's not a lot of churches down there. And Brother Espinel go down there and preach, start that Bible college, start that. I'm excited about his work and meeting him this week. I won't be the same, amen. Brother Tim, while he's doing in prison, that's an unseen church that you'll never know about in prison, amen. But go down there and preach and, and tell the others, they'll hear, hey, there's bread. There's some guy that's down here telling us about Jesus or something do this, amen. That's what missions is, amen. Down there, down the road, at the prison house, amen, everywhere, there's a passage out of there. Listen tonight, church. Let's don't close this thing out with just sitting there like a knot on the log. Let's just don't sit there tonight not doing anything well I'm not going to do anything let's embrace this this week and let's say by God's grace we're going to get those people that are there out of there you know what I, I, a lot of people think we go in prison trying to get them out of jail we don't hey that's not their biggest problem their biggest problem is sin I've been to Cuba on a mission trip you know their biggest problem is not being poor it's sin hey man you know what the one in Russia is? His biggest problem is not being under communism. It's being in sin, amen. You know what the biggest problem with being in Delaware is? Being lost without God, amen. Amen. Passage out of Luke, verse number 6, said, Return, and the Lord visited him, verse number 7, Wherefore she went out, for, went out, uh, wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was. She went forth out of that place. Pastor Valiente, she wasn't, she wasn't, she didn't want to stay there no longer. Church, can I say to you tonight, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to be the same. I, I won't go back to North Carolina tell them what that church up there at Lighthouse done for us, how they blessed us, how we growed together, how we met one another. My wife said, man, if I said, well, if we lived up here, she said, ain't no living up here to it. If that church was down there, we'd go there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's a blessing, amen. I mean, we feel at home. My wife don't feel at home everywhere. Hey Amen. I mean, I'm just telling you the truth tonight. But go to God. I listen. I don't want to be the same. I want to get out. Hey, I want to be different this week. Let God do a work in my life. Amen. Guess what? I get to come right back up here Monday and go to prison right up here at the Gander Hill. Where is your there at tonight? Where are you at tonight? Are you lost? You can be saved. Are you backslidden? You can slide up. Huh? Are you not giving? You can start giving. Hey, man. Who was it there in the book of Acts? I preached on her. I can't. Uh, her, na her name flew me right now. Uh, uh, she she give all. She she done all she could. She made them garments there. And when they buried her, when she died, you remember she made all them garments. She had the ministry of helps. Boy, I appreciate those ladies that done for my wife this week. Y'all made her feel like a queen. Y'all put it on me. I got to go back next week and give her baskets and flowers. And, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Amen. Brother Tim, you know you're the same way, brother. Amen. <laughs> Spoil our wives. Y'all killing us. Amen. But anyway, got to get out of there tonight. Where's your there at tonight? I want to leave you with this thought tonight. I, I, I want to I I leave you with this thought tonight. Out of six people, two got out. Ruth and Naomi. Out of six people, two got out. Two got out. Elimelech should have been a missionary to his own family. Should have. Shouldn't have got them there. Shouldn't have took them there. Shouldn't have got them away from God. Shouldn't have got them down there away from the Lord. Shouldn't have got them down there. Just because times are hard and rough, that's no reason to run. Amen. That's when we really need to embrace one another. And we need to embrace the gospel. And we need to embrace God and say, God, you'll get us through this. I think sometimes that we have adversities come just to see how strong our faith really is. Amen. Where are you at tonight? Where is your there? I'm speaking to a young person. You've sat here all week. You've heard all these preachers preach. You've heard the call. You've heard something. Has God dealt with your heart on something? Other people, 20-year-old uh, 20, 20 to 40-year-old, is God calling you to do something? And then 40 and older, it, where is your there at? Where are you tonight?